from grisly death scenes that were too extreme for their own good, to hilariously odd sequences that would have likely derailed an entire project. These deleted scenes have to be seen to be believed. I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 deleted movie scenes you won't believe actually happened. Number 10. Empress Palpatine Takes the Throne Star Wars Episode 9 The Rise of Skywalker Coming into J.J. Abrams' 2019 send-off to the Skywalker saga, one of the major rumors doing the rounds revolved around Daisy Ridley's Rey finally giving in to the dark side. However, by the time The Rise of Skywalker burst onto the scene in December, it was revealed that Rey was simply coming face-to-face -face with her darkest fear in the future, a version of herself consumed by the dark side, equipped with a rather cool double-bladed lightsaber. Yet some behind-the-scenes footage of The Rise of Skywalker Skywalker shoot actually later revealed some previously unseen scenarios involving this dark ray persona. In perhaps the most striking image released by Disney and Lucasfilm, Abrams is seen communicating with Ridley in full Empress Palpatine getup, whilst the actor is perched on the Sith throne that we see towards the latter stages of the grand finale. Could this mean there was an alternative ending which depicted Dark Rey replacing her grandfather as a Sith Lord? Though that would have been shocking, it's more likely this scene was shot to visually complement the moment in Rise of Skywalker, where Rey explains experiencing a vision of herself on the throne of the Sith. Number 9. An NC-17 Death Scene – The Dark Knight Rises Now, The Dark Knight Rises may not be a film that completely shies away from some rather unsettling moments of violence. Hell, Bane literally breaks the bat's back in the final entry of Christopher Nolan's trilogy, but it once boasted a moment so chilling that the feature very nearly earned itself an NC-17 rating. According to actor Matthew Modine, his character of Peter Foley was once set for a pretty disturbing conclusion in the film, one that was even shot on set. As many will no doubt remember, Foley is viciously killed by Talia al Ghul during the feature's climax. However, viewers don't actually see the moment he's dispatched by the daughter of Raj al Ghul. This brutal moment was in fact filmed by Nolan, but the visual of Foley, or rather Modine's stunt double, being pulverized by the vehicle and sent flying through the air, only to smack into the concrete with a sickening thud, was deemed too extreme to include in the feature. Nolan even went as far as to tell the actor if he would have put it in the movie, it would have got an NC-17 rating because it was so violent. Number 8. Borat Takes Part in a Porno Borat If you've ever had the pleasure of witnessing any one of Sasha Baron Cohen's consistently outlandish skits whilst under the guise of his trusty Kazakhstani journalist Borat, you'd be forgiven for thinking that no situation was off limits. Yet in the case of Borat's first big screen adventure, Cohen was clearly game for a rather raunchy scene to make the final cut. But that still didn't stop the controversial moment landing on the cutting room floor in the end. Cohen explained whilst on Conan that they filmed a full scenario which saw the character joining a porn movie. This entirely real situation soon escalated when the actor kept derailing the shoot by respectfully allowing the two porn stars to continue without him, despite being directed to <clears throat> join in. Things soon got out of hand when Borat only agreed to sleep with his co-star if she had hair on her pubis, resulting in the director gluing pieces of his own hair on said area to move the shoot along. Yep, yep, that actually happened. Ultimately, Borat explaining that he contracted syphilis a whopping 24 times was the final straw, leading to the poor actress on set thankfully putting her foot down. Number 7. Dr. Julia Harris Takes Things Too Far Horrible Bosses 2 one of the most talked about elements coming out of the first Horrible Bosses movie was the sight of Jennifer Aniston's Dr. Julia Harris routinely tormenting Charlie Day's Dale Arbus, with the character doing everything in her power to blackmail her colleague into sleeping with her. Yeah, things were taken up a notch when it came to the film's eventual sequel, to the point where the folks behind the feature definitely felt they'd gone a little bit too far. As Aniston explained in an appearance on Conan, one deleted scene involved intercourse with her character that was kind of not even mutual. It would have seen Harris having unconsensual sex with Dale whilst he was in a coma, making it fairly obvious why the anything but funny scene was ultimately given the chop in the end. The disturbing act is still alluded to in the sequel, which is a problem in its own right, but at least someone had the sense to see that throwing this horrendous sequence into the film would have invited more unwanted controversy aimed at Aniston's character and the movie as a whole.
Number 6. Logan Kills Jean Grey Again, Logan James Mangold's Logan wasn't afraid to delve into deeper and darker waters. With the old man Logan-inspired tale constantly reminding us that life ain't all sunshine and rainbows during its 137-minute runtime. But many will be surprised to learn that arguably one of the film's bleakest moments, and oh boy is that saying something, didn't even make it into the finished product. Coming during the sequence which saw Logan, Charles, and Laura enjoying some dinner with a family they'd helped in the wake of a road accident. When asked whether old Wolvie was ever married, Professor X drops a tragic bombshell. Charles explains that Logan was in fact married to Jean Grey, a character fans of the X-Men flicks and comics know only too well. However, the professor would also add that she passed, thoroughly killing the mood by stating that he killed her. Mangold has gone on record to admit that while he liked the moment in isolation, when cut into the movie, it had a powerful effect of damping that moment. Yet, it is interesting to note that Logan once again was seemingly responsible for the death of his beloved Jean. Number 5. Pennywise Eats a Baby It Yep, this actually happened, or at least it was shot. As Bill Skarsgård revealed on the Playback podcast a few years ago, a scene was filmed for the first IT feature which focused on the backstory of the demented being that would eventually become Pennywise. This sequence turned out really, really disturbing, according to the actor himself, and was ultimately left on the cutting room floor. Later down the road, the script used to shoot this freakish moment was then leaked online, revealing that the deleted scene in question would have involved the earlier form of Pennywise devouring a baby girl in front of her own mother. By the sounds of it, the exchange would have been up there with some of the monster's most barbaric and gruesome acts to date. But the sight of an innocent child being eaten alive by this creature would have likely been a bit too much for more than a few. So it's no surprise everyone involved decided to spare audiences the horror of this horrific act on the big screen. Number 4. The Force Isn't Strong with NSYNC Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones Brace yourselves, but a long time ago in a galaxy not far away enough, a certain boy band filmed a cameo appearance in George Lucas's second prequel entry. For those wondering why the likes of J.C. Chasers, Chris Kirkpatrick, and Joey Fatoni of NSYNC fame were ultimately absent from Attack of the Clones in the end though, it's rumored that the apparent fan backlash which met this decision during the shoot was to blame. The lads reportedly all took part in the filming of the movie's epic Geonosis battle scene, donning Jedi robes for the mighty skirmish. But their appearances, which were said to have been near undetectable in the first place, were thrown out by the time the lackluster prequel hit the big screen. They may have been set to wield lightsabers and use the force at one point, but before long it was bye 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 for these pop sensations. Number 3. An Alien Crab Walk Alien The age-old adage of less is more usually lends itself perfectly to the creation and execution of a movie monster on the big screen. One glance at the way Steven Spielberg had his audience do the heavy lifting for him when bringing big old Brucey to life and into our nightmares in Jaws sits as perhaps the most notable example of this. However, Ridley Scott's delivery of his xenomorph in Alien undoubtedly comes in as a close second. While Scott did masterfully use the all-round dark and gloominess of his chosen Nostromo setting to effectively tease the appearance of the terrifying creature for the most part, one scene which failed to make the final cut very nearly derailed all of that suspense that had been brilliantly building. Instead of having the alien creepily maraud towards Lambert before ultimately ending her life in a sickening fashion, the original cut of the scene had the xenomorph perform what can best be described as a crab walk towards its prey. It looked as hilarious as it sounds, and quickly shifted the vibe from intense to ludicrous. Luckily, Scott made the right call to leave this version of the scene in the editing room. Number 2. J. Jonah Spider-Man Spider-Man 2 if you thought J.K. Simmons' unexpected appearance at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home was the most shocking scene involving the actor in full J. Jonah Jameson guys, then do we have a treat for you. Released as part of Sony's Spider-Man 2.1 extended cut of the sequel to Sam Raimi's first Spider-Hit, we somehow found ourselves in a situation which depicted Jameson jumping around his office in the Web Slinger's iconic suit, all with his trademark cigar in mouth. This moment had come on the back of Peter Parker famously dropping the Spider-Man mantle in said sequel, even going as far as to throw his suit in the trash. 
The attire then ends up in Jonah's possession in the theatrical cut after being fished out of the bins by a passerby and delivered to the Daily Bugle. Yet things take a bit of a turn in the extended version when the loudmouth editor-in-chief strangely opts to take the Spidey suit out for a test drive. Now let's be honest, it certainly makes for a balmy visual, but it no doubt would have felt out of place in the originally released film. But never fear, Spider Jonah may just pop up in a multiverse near you going forward. Number 1. Harley Quinn and Deadshot Share a Smooch Suicide Squad On the back of Zack Snyder's Justice League breathing new life into a property that had once been considered a depressing failure, fans were quick to clamor for the release of the air cut of 2016's ill-fated Suicide Squad. And though it still seems unlikely that Warner Brothers will ever commit to bringing David Ayer's untampered Task Force X to life, that hasn't stopped some dedicated fans from going out of their way to reveal a few of the moments that never made it into the suicide flop. In an image which was unleashed onto the Twitterverse by user at RTAircutSS, a previously unseen shot of Harley Quinn snogging Deadshot quickly caught people's attention. An accompanying piece of script which described this very moment soon followed on the same account, leading many to wonder just what else was butchered from Ayer's original movie. The director himself has confirmed that this Twitter to use his leaks are legit, admitting that all the excerpts that were posted onto the account were very much filmed. But will the positive response to these images and script leaks help persuade Warner Brothers to pull the air cut trigger? Well, stranger things have happened. And that's our list. Know any other deleted movie scenes people won't believe actually happened? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video you are watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this video today, and I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye!